Um, when this thing came up, I, I did not. Uh, I have a lot to prove to myself. I have a lot to prove to, to my organization. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest here. I'm tired of being disrespected. So uh, there was no question I was going to play this year. Excited to know where we're going to be playing. And excited to have a, a, a city that, that, that is excited about having us. We are now the Las Vegas Raiders. It's time for another episode of Vegas Nation Blitz. Welcome in, everyone. Cassie Soto here. Well, a lot of news to discuss this second week of training camp, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Joining me outside of the Raiders Henderson headquarters is Raiders beat writer Vinny Bonsignor. Vinny, um, let's go ahead and start with the news that a few Raiders players have decided to opt out this season because of coronavirus. What can you tell us about that? Well, you, you had to expect that at some point some players, um, you know, would opt out, and we have to respect that. Uh, this is a really difficult situation for everybody involved. Everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own journey. Everybody has their own situation to go back to at home. Uh, people have underlying conditions. So out of 90 players, uh, it, was, it was inevitable uh, that, that some players would opt out of the season based on what's going on in their own personal lives. So, uh, again, no surprise here. Uh, and, and as of right now, you know, it, it looks like the main roster, the main players, uh, is going to be intact, although, you know, we'll wait and see. Well, along with that, Vinny, the Raiders have also announced multiple transactions. Let's go ahead and start with the trade of P.J. Hall. Yeah, uh, that was an interesting one. At the uh, early part of Monday, uh, P.J. Hall, it got out on social media that he was going to be uh, released, that he was getting ready to be released. It was almost as if he had already gotten released. Uh, but it looks like in the, in, the, in the time between actually filing that paperwork and making that all official, uh, the Raiders got on the phone and were able to talk to some teams, one of which was the Vikings. Uh, they lost a player to an opt-out, Michael Pierce, a guy that they had signed as a free agent from the Baltimore Ravens and was supposed to be their starting defensive tackle. He opted out in a surprise for the Vikings, left a gaping hole in the interior of their defense. They looked at the situation and said, you know what, we'd rather give up a seventh-round pick than try to play the waiver wire game and, and potentially lose him to somebody else. So that was one of those situations where when something leaks sometimes on social media or gets out there, teams don't always like that. But this is a situation that had actually worked out for the Raiders. Final one for you here, Vinny, and maybe the topic fans care most about is the official announcement that fans will not be able to attend games this season at that brand new Allegiant Stadium. This is sort of something we saw coming, though, is it not? Yeah, uh, you know, Mark Davis, the Raiders owner, uh, kind of tipped his hand a little bit about, about a month ago. I remember I had extensive conversations with Mark about the subject, about the possibility, and he just had misgivings about, look, it was, it was, it was inevitable that um, there was no way that 65,000 fans were going to be allowed at Allegiant Stadium this year, given everything that was going on with COVID-19, given everything that is going on uh, with, with COVID-19. And... From his perspective, he didn't want to tell one fan, let alone thousands upon thousands of fans, that they couldn't be part of the experience of celebrating Allegiant Stadium and celebrating the Raiders' first year in Las Vegas. So what he's decided to do is, since all fans can't be in attendance this year at Allegiant Stadium, he'd rather have no fans this year, put the celebration on pause, put the Raiders' kind of first official year at Allegiant Stadium, celebrating it with their new market here in Las Vegas, uh, to 2021 so everyone can enjoy it and celebrate it in its rightful way in the way everyone envisioned it from the governor's office in New, in, 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 in uh, Carson City right on down to the uh, fans here in Las Vegas. In other news, the Raiders signed free agent running back Jeremy Hill, the former Cincinnati Bengal most recently played for the New England Patriots in 2018. Tight end Jordan Reed signed a one-year deal with the San Francisco 49ers. Reed was released by Washington six months ago. And Forbes magazine has named the Raiders the 12th most valuable franchise in the NFL and the 26th most valuable sports franchise in the world. 
Raiders rookies had a little fun on social media this week. The players had their team pictures taken, and cornerback Damon Arnett posted this picture on his Instagram, posing next to fellow rookies Lynn Bowden and Henry Ruggs. You can see there they're all decked out in Raiders gear. The caption reading, quote, the new era. And sticking with the team's picture day, we're seeing for the first time longtime Cowboys tight end Jason Witten trade in his former team's silver and blue unis for his new team team's silver and black color scheme. Witten, of course, spent nearly two decades with the Cowboys and will now be looked at as a veteran to help lead a young group of tight ends to success this season. And finally, Raiders fullback Alec Ingold is doing something pretty special for his fans on his Instagram page. He's putting together a quick video every Monday that he hopes will help inspire the next generation of athletes who are really unsure if they will have a season this year and just need a little bit of motivation to help keep their dreams alive. Here's Alex's very first Mindset Monday video. Write your dreams down today. Just write them down on a piece of paper. You want to be a doctor, write it down. You want to be a teacher, you want to be a firefighter, you want to be an athlete, an actor. If you want to be famous on TikTok, write it down. Get it on a piece of paper so you can see it. Put it on your sink. Put it on a put it on a mirror every day when you wake up. Put it right by your light. That's why I had to do, you know, I wrote down you know, playing the NFL and I had to see it every single day to make that thing come true. So believe it. Once you can see it every single day, once you write it down, you can feel it. It, it gets contagious. It doesn't matter how you wake up, whether you're ready to go, whether you're upset, whether you're excited, regardless of how you wake up that morning, you see that goal, you see that dream, you can go chase it. You can visualize what it takes to be that person on a piece of paper. You can see what a doctor, what steps you have to take to get there, whatever phase of life you're in. Write it down, see it every day, and then go get it. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll hear from Raiders quarterback Derek Carr and why he says opting out was not an option for him this season. Stay with us. Who was the first Raider to lead the AFL in receiving yards? Was it A, Doug Assad, B, Dobie Craig, C, Art Powell, or D, Bo Robertson? Stay with us for the answer. Did I think about opting out? Um, when this thing came up, I, I did not. Uh, I have a lot to prove to myself. I have a lot to prove to, to my organization. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest here. I'm tired of being disrespected. So. Uh, there was no question I was going to play this year. That was Raiders quarterback Derek Carr saying there was no chance he was going to miss out on playing this season. Welcome back, everyone, to Vegas Nation Blitz. I'm Cassie Soto. Raiders quarterback Derek Carr recently sat down for a press conference with media where he explained his excitement for this season and how ready he is to get to work with a very talented group of guys. It's not, it's not about proving anybody wrong. Uh, it's about just going and getting that Super Bowl trophy with my teammates. It has nothing to do with anybody outside, but on the inside, we just want to hold that trophy. Because what I, I'm tired of, you know, the whole the hype machine that sometimes the NFL can be, right? Like I, I played way better last year than I did in 2016. Yet all we do is talk about that. Well, we won 12 games, so yay! Oh, you know, everyone's excited. Like that stuff, that stuff. I'm done with all that stuff. So you can say good stuff. Like I said, you can say bad stuff. I think you can sense it in the last probably year or so. I just don't care anymore. You say whatever you want. I'm trying to go win this Super Bowl so we can hang one of these banners in this, in, this beautiful indoor that we got. And then I want to go try and do it again. And then I want to go try and do it again until I'm too old or they kick me out of this place. The players, of course, did not have OTAs this year. In fact, fans might remember seeing these workout videos posted by Carr that he organized himself with his teammates at local parks here in Las Vegas. Carr says now that those workouts were more than worth it. I think it's a great thing. Um, there are some rookies that if, if, we, if we didn't run those practices, they, they probably wouldn't have played this year. And if they did, it would have been later in the season. Um, I think we're going to be able to get, get some get some play out of them, get some, some minutes out of them, so to speak, in basketball terms, that we probably probably wouldn't have gotten out of them if we didn't do that. You know, it's just, 
you know, training camp happens, there's, the vets are back, there's, so, there's only so many reps to go around, you know, and especially with a shortened training camp, there's only so much time to get ready for this season. So we're really getting ready for our first game, you know. We're trying to figure out who's going to play with us on that first game. There's no preseason and all these kind of things. So uh, being able to do that, uh, I'm telling you, I, like I said before, if any team did more than us, I would be completely shocked and I probably wouldn't believe it. As far as the coronavirus goes, Carr says he and his teammates are doing the very best they can during these times to ensure that they will play a season this year. When sports are on, it just, you know, it's, it's a good feeling, you know, uh, to be able to watch something and cheer for somebody. So um, we, we understood that we were going we're gonna to do our best to be able to play and do all those things, but we got to be as safe as possible. Um, you know, I got to have a pregnant wife, you know. Um, a lot of these guys have family members with, um, you know, high risk conditions, as do I. You know, there, there's some family members I won't be able to see until after the season, you know, and uh, and that's tough. This is a weird situation, uh, never seen before, but, you know, we're trying our best. Every chance I get, I got hand sanitizer. I'm washing my hands. I'm, we all got these little monitors on that as soon as it starts, you know, starts blinking red, you're too close to somebody. So everyone sees it and they start backing away from each other, you know. But how do you do that as a receiver in a corner, you know, in a jam, you know, technique, you know, all the. So we're trying our best, but we're, we're hoping that by the time whoever's in our building, they've been tested so many times and reoccurring that uh, we're, we're hoping that this place is the safest place in all of Las Vegas, you know, and that's what we're kind of trusting and banking on. When asked what his transition from California to Las Vegas has been like, the California native says it's definitely taken some time to get used to. Uh, it was a little weird moving here, but now that we've gotten here, it's, it's, it's really this like college atmosphere here in Vegas. It's, it's a small town kind of feel to it where everybody knows everybody. They're like, yeah, down on uh, you know, St. Rose, yeah, we got this little spot over here. And you start like connecting the dots and your neighbor owns that right there. And he's, you know, it's, everybody knows each other and it's kind of it's cool, you know? Whereas in the Bay, everyone could be like two hours apart. Like getting people together is like really tough to do uh, as a football team where, whereas here, the farthest guy from me is like 20 minutes away. You know, and that's the farthest drive. And we feel like now that we moved here, now we're all upset about a 20 minute drive to go to his house, right? But uh, I think that we miss, I miss California. I miss, I miss the Bay. I miss uh, the friends that my kids had. I know that they miss them and all that kind of stuff. And uh, transitioning into life in Nevada and Las Vegas for my family. But uh, to say uh, football wise, we are, we're pumped up. You know, the city, it has that like Fresno State small town feel to it uh, again where they're just excited about having a team. The way that they uh, receive the Golden Knights here, the way that, uh, you know, that went, the way that they sell that out and, you know, we're excited, the buzz around town. Everywhere, everywhere, every time I go to the gas station, I mean, I get little kids running up and just wearing your jersey and all this kind of stuff. They find out what park you're throwing at and they just stand there and they just want to watch because they're just so blown away that there's an NFL team here. Uh, it's just it's a, it's just a different atmosphere. We're not we're not sharing a city, you know, with with three or four different professional sports teams. We're here, the Knights are here, and we're just rolling. You know, and football and hockey are you know drastically different. So uh, everyone just looks at it different. So it's just it's just an exciting time, uh, you know, for football in this town because everywhere we go, everyone's just excited. Once again, that was Raiders quarterback Derek Carr. We are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will be joined by Vegas Nation Zone Heidi Fang and Adam Hill, and they will discuss player opt-outs from around the league. Stay with us. The answer is C, R. Powell. The Raider racked up 1,304 receiving yards in 1963. Powell also led the league in touchdowns with 16. Welcome back to the Vegas Nation Blitz. I'm your Vegas Nation podcast host, Heidi Fang, and I'm joined here with our NFL writer, Adam Hill, and we're going to talk about what is happening right now in the NFL regarding opt-outs. Adam, what can you tell us about this list that seems to be growing by the day? Yeah, the clear team that's been affected the most by these opt-outs is the New England Patriots. Uh, you know, we went into this not knowing how many players were going to do it, what the decisions were going to be, uh, and then it turns out New England had a bunch of guys that just decided, you know what? I've been in the league for a while. I've made enough money. Uh, I've got my Super Bowl rings. Uh, there's too much of a risk here for me. Uh, I'm not going to play. And that includes, you know, Dante Hightower and Patrick Chung, guys that have played over 90% of their snaps the last few years on defense. Those are key cogs and and a defense that was really going to be counted on uh, to help, you know, make up for the loss of Tom Brady on that offense. Fortunately for the Raiders, as Vinny mentioned earlier, two losses, but 
nobody that they were really counting on to make a dramatic impact, mostly depth and fringe of the roster guys. So uh, it seems like the Raiders came through this much more unscathed than a lot of the other teams in the league did. And uh, certainly uh, teams are going to have to be look on the lookout, including if somebody right up to that deadline, if somebody opts out, you need to replace those guys. Well, Adam, you mentioned the Patriots there, and I have to ask because this is a conspiracy theory that I've been seeing going around the <laughs> Internet. Do you think that Bill Belichick has been kind of nudging any players here to opt out? That way maybe they can look at a quarterback in Trevor Lawrence who might be available in the 2021 draft. I don't buy that one at all. I think if you're truly tanking, you're not signing Cam Newton late in the process. So I don't, I don't think they're tanking. I think they're, what they're telling players is, hey, listen, if you're not comfortable – Go ahead and opt out because one of the things it does, it puts some of those contracts on pause. Uh, it's essentially, as I said, a redshirt year. Uh, I don't think they're going to be bad enough to tank for Trevor, though. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. We're always kind of, you know, convinced that he's up to something, uh, whether he's manipulating contracts or salary cap, whatever it is. We always suspect Bill Belichick's up to something, uh, but I don't think it's tank. Great stuff as always, Adam, and thanks again for all of that. Again, as Adam said, the date that the NFL players have to put their name on the opt-out list by will be Thursday afternoon. But right now, everybody, stay tuned here as we look back on the Raiders' participation in the American Bowl and their games played overseas with that right here in this moment on Raiders History. In each of the past four seasons, the Raiders have played abroad from Mexico City to London. But the first game the Silver and Black played overseas as part of the NFL's campaign to introduce the rest of the world to the sport we call football took place in London on August 5, 1990 as part of the American Bowl. The American Bowl started in 1986 and carried on through 2005. Each year, two NFL teams would play in the event, which took place the same week as the Pro Football Hall of Fame game, and it was treated as the fifth preseason game. The first time the Raiders played overseas, they faced the Saints in London's Wembley Stadium. They lost the game 17-10. The Raiders went 1-3 in the American Bowl, with their only win coming against the Broncos in Barcelona in 1994. The American Bowl was shut down in 2005 as the league turned its focus to playing regular season games abroad in what's now known as the NFL's International Series. From 2014 to 2019, the Raiders played five games internationally in London and Mexico. But NFL games played in foreign lands will come to a halt in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Also, for the first time since the NFL's inception, there will be no preseason games. And that will do it for this moment in Raiders history. Get ready for every Raiders game with us. Vegas Nation Game Day will give you everything you need to know about each week's matchup. I'm excited. Vegas Nation Game Day, coming to you on Sunday, September 13th at 9 a.m. for the Raiders season opener versus the Panthers. Las Vegas Raiders will lead them right here to the almost completed Allegiant Stadium. Cassie Soto and Mick Adegers here. Mick, we are standing on the grounds of Allegiant Stadium now. The fences have been taken down. Fans can come in and take pictures and see this stadium up close and personal. What kind of things can they see now with the fence down? Yeah, now you can actually get on the site, uh, get a, you know, look at what goes on inside of the plaza. They got uh, some of the landscaping, see some of the architect stuff you, um, you know, couldn't see from being far away. Uh, some of the direct, directional signage, it gives you a little bit more of an insight of the parking, what's going on around the area. Some of the, 
activation sites like the Modella uh, tailgate area. You know, who didn't know it was named after Modella until the science pontiff. So, you know, you get a little bit more of an inside look. Um, up close and personal. I've seen every time I've been out here the last few days, people have been out here with families and stuff taking pictures. So it's already becoming a, a little tour site, a little picture opportunity site. So you know, fans are already taking advantage of the, the fence is being taken down. Well, in my intro, I say almost completed. Uh, crews did reach that July 31st substantial completion date, but there's still some work to be done that will lead them uh, through November. What kind of things will be done, the finishing touches during this time? Yeah, just um, minor details, um, touch of paint, uh, installation of furniture, some back of the house stuff that you might not see when you go inside the building. Obviously, if they could have the Garth Brooks concert on August 22nd, they would be able to have 65,000 people in there. But, you know, just small things that, you know, most people would even notice. Uh, it's mainly, you know, finishing touch and stuff. So, you know, nothing major, nothing that would set it behind schedule. Just, you know, some normal back of the house stuff uh, that, you know, with any large project, they'll have a punch list items, you know, so it's nothing out of the ordinary. Well, you recently spoke with Raiders owner Mark Davis. This was obviously a dream come true for him. What did he have to say about this completion and uh, everything moving forward? Yeah, no, he's, he said he takes his midnight walks here. And he's, he goes and stands on the 50 yard line, just kind of looks around. He's like, hey, we finally did it. Um, you know, my dad's been trying to get this done in the Raider Nation for years. And he's like, every time I think about it, I get, you know, a little emotional. So, you know, he's taking it in now. Um, no fans are going to be at games this year, so the best way, he said, to get in is uh, the tours. They're going to be giving personal tours. They haven't put any details on that yet, but looking at the job posting, it looks like 25 and under uh, groups. Uh, I looked at pricing at other stadiums, and, you know, it's around 23 to $25, so I would imagine this is going to be the same, but those are all pretty new as well. Fans are all, you know, they want to go to the games, but, hey, if you can't, that's, you know, it's a consolation prize there, you know, getting there this year. Mick, thank you so much for the updates, as always. Thanks, guys. That will do it for this week's episode of Vegas Nation Blitz. For everything else you need to know about the Raiders and Allegiant Stadium, head on over to VegasNation.com for Vegas Nation Blitz. I'm Cassie Soto.